The gangly 27-year-old Ethereum founder has a vision for humanity's future that goes far beyond making a quick buck on cryptocurrency. So what's actually on Vitalik Buterin's to-do list? Bringing down the nation-state, halting climate change, and even curing death itself. Can he pull it off? Join us today as we man the barricades and ask how Vitalik Buterin might lead a revolution. The flame of revolution was first ignited in Vitalik Buterin's heart during the Russian-Canadian software developer's early teens. I happily played World of Warcraft from 2007 to 2010, the young billionaire recently wrote on his blog. Then one day, Blizzard removed the damage component from my beloved warlock's siphon life spell. I cried myself to sleep, remembers Vitalik. On that day, I realized what horrors centralized services bring. The following year, Vitalik's software developer father introduced his crestfallen son to a potential solution to the scourge of central authority, Bitcoin. Vitalik was already great at maths, able to add large numbers in his head preternaturally fast. As a child, one of his favorite toys was Microsoft Excel, so the blockchain sat very well with him. Despite enrolling in a full program of advanced courses at Canada's University of Waterloo during 2012, Vitalik simultaneously spent 30 hours of his week on assorted crypto projects. Something had to give, so Vitalik dropped out of college and dedicated his life to Ethereum. Most people only know of Ethereum as an alternative to Bitcoin, Certainly, it is an alternative to Bitcoin, and so much more besides. When Satoshi Nakamoto first devised the Bitcoin blockchain, he, or she, deliberately employed a limited programming vocabulary, largely for reasons of security. Conversely, when Vitalik set about creating Ethereum, his intent was to make his new blockchain programming language Turing complete, that is to say, versatile and capable of running elaborate secondary applications. Less a simple transaction ledger, more a fully-fledged online platform. Vitalik Buterin's revolutionary new framework followed the utopian ideal of peer-to-peer -peer interaction proposed by Satoshi Nakamoto and took it beyond straightforward commerce. Ethereum users would have a freer reign to recreate all sorts of applications or whole corporations on the Ethereum chain. If you were so minded, you could build an entire Facebook-style social network or a private stock market. To date, diverse Ethereum projects abound, from So Rare, which recreates the excitement of fantasy football leagues, to serious endeavors like Civil, which leverages cryptography to protect journalism against censorship and the erosion of professional standards. Why is all this important to Vitalik? Because the blockchain takes trust as a service away from big, powerful legacy institutions like banks and hands it back to the community. That's quite revolutionary in itself. Still salty about his little Warcraft man, Vitalik told Wired magazine, I saw everything to do with either government regulation or corporate control as just being plain evil. And I assumed that people in those institutions were kind of like Mr. Burns, sitting behind their desks saying, excellent, how can I screw a thousand people over this time? Revolution is inevitable, you see, because helping the little guy, in Vitalik's view, necessarily means extracting authority from those who currently exercise it. Power is a zero-sum game, he told CNBC. If you talk about empowering the little guy, as much as you want to couch it in flowery terminology, you are necessarily disempowering the big guy. Personally, I say screw the big guy. They have enough money already. As well as his uncanny intellect, a colleague describes Vitalik as a genius alien. Our favorite revolutionary is not afraid to start beef. He's very publicly called out Bitcoin evangelist Craig Wright as a fraud and a scammer for claiming to be the real Satoshi Nakamoto. And traditional real-world institutions are already starting to recognize his important work, with Visa, JP Morgan Chase, UBS, and MasterCard investing significant sums in Ethereum projects during 2021. Vitalik has not only engineered a platform for new kinds of interactions, NFTs of course, and newfangled DAOs, or decentralized autonomous organizations, he is also uniquely blessed with the ability to communicate this stuff. Indeed, one of his first gigs in the crypto space was co-founder and lead writer on the influential Bitcoin magazine. Vitalik's ability to express difficult concepts in layman's terms has done much in itself to advance the crypto cause, and to this day he maintains an active blog covering his pet projects and interests with remarkable wit and clarity, for a software dweeb at least. To say nothing of the fact Vitalik speaks fluent Russian, having spent the first years of his life in Chechnya, and English, and Mandarin. He learned Mandarin apparently in just a few months. Vitalik is also
also quite the philanthropist. He told Lex Fridman he thinks wealth for wealth's sake is a spiritual dead end, and on a whim donated a billion dollars in crypto assets to Indian COVID-19 relief efforts last year. Among his most revolutionary wheezes is the idea that nation states are long past their prime. Countries, he writes, are inefficient and slow moving. It's easier to find a single city where there is public interest in adopting any particular radical idea, he claims in a recent blog, than it is to convince an entire country to accept it. So charter cities, think places historically along the lines of Hong Kong or Dubai, are the future of innovation, says Vitalik. And the next generation of Hong Kongs and Dubais will be underpinned by the flexibility and nimbleness of the Ethereum blockchain. Reno, Nevada has already explored blockchain technology, making NFTs of public art, funding DAOs by renting out empty state-owned properties, and even running casino games on blockchain-based random number generators. Beyond such shallow gimmicks, blockchains can improve governance in important ways. Blockchains are, by their very nature, transparent, so government fraud and collusion would be harder to pull off, because all the business of state would be carried out in the open. If you think that sounds far-fetched, you're in good company. Although he describes himself as an intellectual hipster metacontrarian, Vitalik Buterin is the ultimate pragmatist, quite happy to admit when he's wrong, and intrigued by the countless human muddles and compromises he's been forced to make on his unexpected journey to becoming a leading tech seer. As we speak, Vitalik is working around the clock to move the Ethereum blockchain to a proof-of-stake mechanism, rather than the environmentally catastrophic proof-of-work technology he now admits was a huge mistake. Amazingly, for such an important figure in the world of crypto, he's skeptical about the recent NFT craze. I personally cannot relate, he recently told Lex Fridman, to this concept of spending a lot of money on a thing when there's no clear understanding why it would maintain its value. I cannot understand the psychology. However, Vitalik is keen on the woo-woo notion of eternal life and has invested serious time and capital promoting organizations like the Sen's Research Foundation. He thinks everybody should read philosopher Nick Bostrom's Fable of the Dragon Tyrant, which basically mocks our society's daft assumption that death is inevitable. I hope the concept of seeing your parents and grandparents die will disappear, he recently said, in the same way the concept of getting lost in a city disappeared after the invention of the smartphone. Well, even if this brainy, articulate, ultra-wealthy firebrand doesn't live forever, there's a good chance his revolutionary ideas will. What do you think? Will Vitalik rage-quitting Warcraft be the butterfly flap that sets off the revolutionary typhoon? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe for more rabble-rousing tech content.